morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Pete Burbage. I'm the Mizzou, Miller, Miller Park Zoo curator. I am here today with Keeper Eric, who's behind the camera. And today we are going to be checking out our beehives. Um, for those of you that saw our video from last week, we received uh, three packages of bees from Miller Park Zoo. Uh, we installed them into these hives about a week ago. Uh, today, we're just going to be doing checkups, make sure that the queens uh, emerge from their queen cages, uh, that the workers have been feeding and have started comb production. I'm not expecting to see any honey yet, I'm not expecting to see any brood yet, but if we do see that, that's great. Uh, this is just to make sure that they're getting along really well in here, we're going to give them some extra food. And if the queen is uh, visible and doesn't have a mark on her, we're going to go ahead and paint the queen as well. Uh, we use a non-toxic acrylic paint marker, and we're just going to put a little dot on her back if we can find her. Um, so as you can see, I am all suited up. Uh, I have gloves on, a uh, bee hood uh, and suit, as well as long pants to help keep uh, these bees from hopefully stinging, not stinging. Uh, bees naturally don't want to sting, uh, because when a bee does sting you, it does die, so stinging is the last resort. But to help keep the bees calm, uh, we do have our smoker with us today, which does have some smoke pellets in it. The smoke helps uh, mask the alarm pheromones and other uh, calls that the bees may have if we go in there and mess with them. So no more talking, let's go ahead and open this thing up. Um, now the beehive does have two boxes on it. The lower box uh, here uh, of our hive is mainly all uh, comb. This is just a feeder box, so when I take the lid off, you're gonna see the only thing up here right now is uh, jars of food for the bees. Uh, they have drank some uh, of their uh, bee juice, so I'm not gonna need to fill it too much. With the warm weather the last few days, they actually have uh, been out collecting uh, pollen on their own. So we may even see a few bees in here right now with it. Uh, it is kind of chilly out, so they're not out and active quite yet. But taking the lid off, you can see the bees already in here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little smoke on them. I'm sure you can hear them. There we go. So let's go ahead and take one of these frames out. Oh wow, there's a little more development than I thought there'd be. So you can see the bees have already started to make comb uh, through here. I don't see any eggs in that comb quite yet, which is okay. That's normal. Is that honey up there already? See that top? Uh, it doesn't, kind of, yeah, kind of. yeah. There's actually already little bits of honey in there. You can actually see. Uh, so the bees are starting to produce which is nice. Help keep their colonies nice and safe. Bees do eat their own honey. It's not just for us. Uh, a healthy hive uh, can make 100 to 200 pounds of honey in a season, uh, and they eat that year round. That's their food stores. So in fact, this comb here is actually filled with a lot more honey. You can actually see a lot more in there. They're starting to make it. So very nice, very nice comb development, very nice. Uh, honey stores and you can actually also see the colored um, cells in here I'm gonna go ahead and smoke them out of the way um, that is actually pollen so that's the pollen uh, they're bringing back looking good bees all right let's take this out see if the queen has emerged I'm gonna go ahead and bet she has if you've got questions, you can start asking them and we will answer them. Here is the queen cage. And I do not see the queen. Is that her? No. Tell you what, the cage looks like it's been opened a little bit, but we're gonna go ahead and crack it open the rest of the way. There we go. No, queen is out. 
So that means she is somewhere in this hive. So I don't want to spend too long in here because these bees have been really busy. It looks like they're doing a really good job. Uh, you'll be able to tell which one the queen bee is. She'll be much longer than their normal bees. She may have a mark on her back. Uh, not 100% sure if this queen is marked or not. But the other way you can tell where the queen is is um, the worker bees will be trying to feed her. So you'll see several bees uh, shaped around her, uh, trying to make sure she's well fed and well kept. And as you can see, the bees are not being aggressive at all. Nobody here is trying to sting. Nobody is trying to uh, scare us away. That's because we're being nice and gentle with the bees uh, and just really slowly moving them out of the way. Certain hives you can actually work uh, without protective gear. I do not recommend doing that uh, right away. I don't know these hives yet. Every single beehive has a different personality. Um, and I don't know these bees well enough yet to do that. So we're just still taking every precaution, being gloved and everything else. So I tell you what, I want to put these guys back. They are doing such an excellent job. I don't want to disturb them too much. I'm just going to take one quick look here, see if I can see our queen. And if not, we're going to move on to our next hive, because we do have two hives to look at today. But nope, I don't see her. So we're just going to go ahead and put this back. They don't need any more food. They do have plenty of food here, so we're just gonna slide this back on top. And then close up the lid. So this is an excellent start to a beehive. This is a lot of progress. I didn't expect to see that much comb development or even that much honey at all uh, during the first week. So the fact that they're doing that already is a very, very good sign for summer. So let's go check out our second hive, which is just down the way here. Uh, but before we do that, I am going to replenish our smoker here. Uh, we did run out of smoke pellets. So we're going to go ahead and just toss in a pellet and light it up. Uh, Britt has a question. Yeah, Britt, go ahead. How much uh, honey can one bee make during its lifetime? Do we know that? Yeah, it's actually very little. A single bee uh, working to make honey will only make about a teaspoon to a teaspoon and a quarter uh, during its entire life. Uh, worker bees only live for six months. And during those six months, they have many different jobs. They aren't just honey producers. They're also egg carers, uh, comb carers. Uh, they all have different things to do. So not every single bee in the hive uh, is responsible for getting pollen and making honey. They all do many different things. But when you have thousands and thousands of bees all of that does add up to a very good functional system. So let's head on over to hive number two here. So again, it's the same process. Uh, we have our box down at the larger box down at the bottom that holds our comb. Uh, and then we have our food box uh, on the second level here. So we're going to go ahead and open up the top and see how much food they've eaten. And it looks like we have ants in here. So we're going to have to clean this out uh, beforehand. We don't want too many uh, foreign bodies going in because they'll also go after the honey. So we'll give this a good cleaning. Oh, they've already started to cap it in. And though that's a much bigger group. We're going to go ahead and put some smoke on that. There's a drone. So there are three different types of bees in a hive. There's the queen, which there's only one of. Uh, there's the workers, which are your normal female bees. And then during the summer, uh, there's something called drones. Drones are male bees. Uh, they're much bigger than the workers. Uh, they don't have stingers and they don't do anything uh, to help the hive out uh, like the workers do. Their entire job is to mate with queens. So they will actually go out, find unmated queens, and mate with them. Oh, this is a much, much higher production hive. Wow, I am really impressed. Look at that comb, that is some nice comb. They are looking good. So we're just gonna set that 
there. And then we're going to see if we can find the queen in here. I'm going to go down and look at the queen cage, see if she's out yet. Now, they, I can tell they've already started to make a lot of wax because a lot of these panels are starting to stick. So we use our uh, spreader here to just pop them loose. Oh, that's tight. That's heavy. Look at all that comb and look at that honey. They're already making some up there. That is very nice. Very, very nice. And this side too, very full. And there's some more uh, bee bread, which is the pollen. Good looking pollen. Very nice, man. Let's pull out the queen cage here. There we are. Oof, this is tight. Have some more cone development. So here is the queen cell box. She's still in there. So actually what we're going to do is pop this open. And I'll see if I can take the queen out and show her to you guys. There we go. So come on over here, because that's the queen. That really long bee right there, that's our queen bee. She marked, she is not marked. So what I'm gonna do, take out my little marking pen here, so we can pop a little green dot on her before she gets away. There she goes. And she's colored. She's got a little bit of green on her. So I'm gonna go ahead and put her in. There she goes, in with the rest of her hive. Well, we have the queen out. Brianna wants to know how do bees determine which, how, the queen, who the queen is. So bees will actually, um, when they go to lay eggs, um, every egg can start off as a worker or a drone or a queen. And what happens is that the hive needs a queen. Uh, those eggs will get fed a special concoction uh, called royal jelly. Uh, the royal jelly will then help turn the uh, eggs into queen eggs. The cells for normal bees uh, look just like normal honeycomb and they're capped over. Queen cells are much, much longer. Uh, they're about double the length. Um, and what happens is is the bees will lay, uh, will make several different queen cells. Uh, when the queens emerge, the very first thing a brand new queen does when she comes out is if she's the first queen, she will actually go through to all the other queen cells and uh, rip them open and kill the other queens. There can only be one queen per hive. Uh, there can't be multiples. So the first thing the, the new queens do is actually uh, eliminate the competition. Um, now that usually only happens when there's either a death of the queen for some reason or uh, the hive splits. When a hive becomes overpopulated, like if every single panel in here were full and there was no room for the queen to lay new eggs, uh, she would take half of the hive and she would leave. Uh, the workers that stay behind would actually find that uh, brood that hasn't been uh, turned into uh, workers or drones yet and then make queen cells out of it. And then a new queen would emerge. After she's born, the queen goes off and mates. She'll find drones from another hive somewhere out in the world. And then she will actually find her way back to the hive she was born in uh, and then start producing for that hive. Uh, queens can live five years and they only mate one time. And after they mate, they can lay hundreds and hundreds of eggs, actually thousands and thousands of eggs uh, during that hive's uh, lifespan uh, without having to go out again. The workers only live for about six months and drones only live for the season. So they're only uh, produced during summer. Uh, and in fact, it's kind of um, uh, interesting to see that once the fall weather turns, once we go from hotter to cooler weather, the workers will actually kick the drones out of the hive 
uh, so they don't use any of the resources to stay alive. Um, bee hierarchy is insanely uh, interesting to watch. So again, this is a very good looking hive, a very good looking uh, brood. Uh, I'm, I'm very impressed with all the progress they've made. Um, now what I'm gonna do here is just clean up uh, the feed box here. I wanna make sure we get these ants out because I don't want them to eat any of the bee food or take any of the food away from the bees. So we just give it a good brush off. Joe was wondering why we needed the queen cage. What was the purpose of the queen cage? So the queen cage is only because she was a brand new queen. Uh, it's, it helps identify her uh, when we get her, and also it helps to uh, introduce them a little slower. Um, if you actually were to just take, get a uh, brand new box of bees, uh, and you were to just let them out, uh, if the queen wasn't... Uh, set in one location the bees could just leave whenever they want to we, you could set all this up perfectly uh and then the bees would just take off before they had a chance to to build the queen cage helps keep the queen in one spot so the bees have time to build that comb and get honey stores going uh and that way when the queen does emerge from her cage uh it encourages them to stay so the queen has been uh, here for about a week um as you can see, they already have a good starting uh, hive going. So that means now they're gonna stay here. They're not gonna wanna use new resources uh, to go anywhere else. So it just helps encourage them to, to live here. Um, Grace's mom is really curious about the honey. Mm -hmm. um, she wants to know how we get the honey out and then what we're gonna do with it. So right now, uh, these eventually will make honey for the zoo. Um, you don't want to take the honey too soon because it is their food. It is the way they uh, they store. So uh, for right now, we're going to leave everything where it is. Now eventually, once we see uh, what's called brood, which is new uh, queens, or uh, new workers being made, uh, we'll add another stack of these cells uh, to the second uh, level here. That's the beautiful thing about these hives, is you can add more and more uh, comb as needed to help uh, keep these bees looking good. Um, there's a special panel called a queen separator. It's just a piece of metal with a bunch of little slits in it. It looks like the top of a grill um, that worker bees can walk through, but the queens can't because the queens are too big. So what we'll do is we'll actually put that down, put a second box on top of it, and then basically the workers will put all of their honey in the top area and then the bottom will have some honey, but it also have all the eggs. So that second box will just be honey, and then we can go through and take a certain percentage of that out uh, and keep for us. We actually have a honey strainer. Uh, we'll have to take the comb out, take the honey out, and then we can bottle it and then use it. Uh, in the wild, bees will just mix their honey in their brood anywhere they want to. But in captivity like this, we're able to separate where it comes from and where it goes. Okay. Um, Tammy has a question about uh, raising bees. She says, can children who are as young as Spencer, who's seven, raise bees? I don't recommend children raising bees. Um, it is intensive. You do have to check on the hives at time to time. You are going to get stung. It does, even wearing all of this protective equipment, uh, you know, we're going into their homes. They're, they're not aggressive animals at all, but they are defensive. They want to make sure that they're not being uh, hurt or taken advantage of. And it does happen, even through all the, the protective gear. One was, I'll try to show it to you. Um, one did sting my finger here while we were working in there. And that is a bee stinger uh, with the venom sac still attached to it. Um, so the bee there injected into the glove and then you can actually see the the venom portion there that still is pumping venom into the glove right there um so i probably he was just protecting his home i don't recommend this for children um this is a very cool hobby it does help uh the environment it helps add pollinators to the area uh one beehive can service six seven miles away uh pollinators and gardens um but it's a very intense uh, job. Charlie, who's six, wants to know how the bees make the honeycomb. So the honeycomb and wax is a secretion that they make. Um, let the truck go by. Uh, it's 
just a special makeup, uh, special thing they eat uh, from all the matter they can digest uh, and push it out into that comb wax. Um, honey is a little different. Honey is made by bees uh, eating nectar, using, uh, putting it into their special honey stomach, which then gets passed on from bee to bee until it becomes super, super concentrated, uh, and then eventually turns into honey, which they will dry out and cap. Honey is one of those things that actually uh, does not go bad. Pure honey can lab. They found pure honey jars for in ancient Egypt that was thousands and thousands of years old that is still edible because of the low water content, uh, the high sugar content, uh, bacteria doesn't really grow in honey. Uh, it's amazing uh, good natural sugar. Okay. Britt, once in a how often we check on the bees. So during the summertime, uh, when they've been out and about, you can actually just look at them from far away. And as long as you see bees going in and out, you don't have to do a whole lot of checking. When the plants are blooming and, and the flowers are out, uh, we don't really have to feed as often. We will do supplemental checks. So this time of year, especially with brand new hives, uh, we want to check them weekly just to make sure they have enough food. We want to make sure they're developing really well. Uh, we want to make sure that we're keeping all the other pests like these ants out of the hive. So we'll go through and just clean it up, make sure we're looking good. Um, during the summer though, it's maybe once every two, three weeks. Uh, during the winter time, it's actually even a little less than that. We will wrap the hives, we'll insulate them. Uh, we give them special food for winter, which is actually called bee patties, which is uh, like fondant and other uh, sugar patties uh, with high additives for them. So they have the ability to eat uh, during the winter. But you also don't want to open the hives when it's too cold or too hot. They actually are very good at controlling their own internal temperature in the hives. Um, but you also want to make sure we're not messing with it too much. All right, couple, just a couple more questions. Mike wants to know how the bees determine who does which job. It, that's up to the bees. Uh, they actually communicate with each other. They, they just know what they're supposed to be doing. Uh, the female, all the workers uh, just know what they're supposed to do in the hive. So some are on clean up duty, some are on uh, honey duty, some are on egg duty. Uh, they just determine that on their own. Okay. Hillary wants to know how many bees we have. So if I had to guess, uh, these hives probably had about five to 600 bees. Uh, this is still a very, very new hive. Uh, the number of bees in here will easily quadruple over the summer. We'll have a couple thousand bees in each of these hives. And as the bees grow, we'll add more space for them to grow. And we'll actually also separate some of the bees out and start new hives with the amount of bees that we have. Uh, last question is from Angie, and it's something pretty topical. We've been hearing in the news is, um, are we worried about the murder hornets that are in Washington State? <laughs> I, I just saw that the other day. Those are some scary looking things. Uh, not worried about them right now. Um, now it is something to consider as uh, the world moves forward. Um, but, you know, I remember, too, another thing we have to worry about is Africanized honeybees, uh, making sure those African killer bees aren't in the area. Um, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, or <laughs> once we know they're coming in. Let me get a close-up. These bees are being pretty calm. So. Yeah, so, yeah, so here's some bees still checking out the old queen cage. As you can see, guys, bees are not aggressive. Bees don't want to come after you. Uh, they're actually, as long as you're gentle with them, they'll be gentle with you. Uh, you can see them crawling on me without too much of a problem right now. Um, bees are very, very helpful. Don't be afraid of honeybees. Honeybees are great to have. Um, they're an excellent sign. They do really good things for the environment, for our native wildlife. Um, and flora so be kind to your bees they're amazing animals all right we'll go ahead and wrap up then awesome well thank you all for uh joining us for the live if you all have any more questions please feel free ask them in the comments I'm more than happy to come back later on and answer uh anything that we missed but otherwise y'all have a great rest of your day yeah tune in tomorrow for giving tuesday it'll be great thanks